What's happening, Nerd Squad, and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Invincible made a splash over at Amazon Prime earlier this year. I'm honestly convinced that it's part of the reason why Jupiter's Landing didn't do so well, but maybe that's just me. I don't know, kind of similar stories. The series was written by Robert Kirkman and published by Image Comics back in 2003. So we're here to catch you up on one of the main characters, Rex Sloan. I'm Taylor McWaters, and here's everything you need to know about Rex Splode. Let's get to it. Number 10, his childhood. Okay, like most superheroes, Rex Sloan's childhood was, well, it was pretty awful. I'm not gonna he was born into a poor family where he had to steal just to get by. He was in no means a bad kid. He had to steal food, not even like wallets or anything. He had to steal food in order for his family to eat. It was troublesome. Regardless, he was skilled. Even before the whole superhero stuff, he had some tactics. So he was doing okay on this particular day. He was out running a store clerk and a police officer all at the same time until a concussion grenade stopped him dead in his tracks. All of a sudden, this man approaches and asks Rex why he's stealing, and Rex explains, like, I have to, man. He's like, my mother's gonna starve if I don't steal this food. And even saying that makes this gentleman laugh. He keeps laughing and he laughs and he walks away laughing, which is, you're like, okay, it's dark. Why was he doing that? No motivational speech, no hand on the shoulder, nothing like that, okay. So later we see this man, but we don't see him until Christmas. He returns to Rex and his family. He brings steak. He introduces himself as Radcliffe while the family eats. They're having a great time. But he comes bearing more than medium rare gifts. He comes with an offer. They don't have much, but there's one thing that the Sloan family can give Radcliffe. Their son Rex, of course. So the father's sees a money sign and immediately he makes the deal and just like that they don't have a son anymore rough. Number nine, his new home. So after a quick handshake, Rex Sloan is now Radcliffe's. The pair travel back to his headquarters and Rex sees his new room and let's just say it's a little nicer than his previous setup. So Rex was informed that Radcliffe wasn't totally honest with his parents. See as Rex began training almost immediately, time kept going on, now Rex is getting his ass kicked during these exercises. But finally, it's operation day and Rex is in no way ready for what's about to come. Before we continue on with this list, if you want to go ahead and give this video a like, the old thumbs up, not that one, that one for sure. That would be great. It really helps our channel out a lot. You're the best. Thank you so much for supporting. Right back into this list. I don't like wasting your time. Let's do it. Number eight, his new powers. So when Rex wakes up, he's told the do's and the don'ts. Okay, this is where the name Rex Splode comes into play. So if he flexes a little bit, if he does the old Rex flex, the charging process will begin. Now the charge is only effective on inorganic objects. So plants, animals, humans, they're not going to explode per se. But all he has to do is apply a small amount of kinetic energy, a little boop, and that energy creates a mighty explosion. Now normally that would be enough to save the day, but the injections also gave Rex super strength as well as super reflexes, you know, so he's not totally weak. Now the density of his skin as well was increased, so those explosions won't hurt him any of those times. Now he tries his new powers on the robot and it works like a charm. His head just engulfs in flames, so now he's eager to do more, however. And Radcliffe tells him that he doesn't have to wait too long to do so. Number seven, batter up. So Rex was soon tied to carry out various assassinations, robberies, and of course, well, arson. It's probably the easiest one for Rex. He was loving it, honestly. I mean, compared to his last family, at least now he was getting the time of day, right? Even if he was, you know, blowing things up with baseballs and causing mischief. So he feels bad, Rex. He voices his opinion on this whole operation to Radcliffe, but Radcliffe just spins his words against him, right? He reminds Rex the first time that they met when Rex explained to him that his crimes were outweighed by his family's hunger. So Radcliffe now tells Rexy Boy that the world, too, is starving. And these particular people were just a cup of noodles. Yeah, those people are the worst, apparently. Who wants to be a cup of noodles? Am I right? Hey, you know, people wearing noodles stuff and, you know, people wanting to be Mr. Noodles, that's not a bad thing per se, right? Yeah. The Radcliffe gifts Rex a moped and Rex was just shocked that he even remembered his birthday. How sweet. So Radcliffe gently reminds Rex that his family sold him for a steak dinner and that this is now where he truly belongs. So Rex is like, yeah, you're right. That's cool. So Rex was then sent on a mission to destroy the Pentagon, which is kind of a big deal, no? On the way there, that's where he met. Number six, Adam Eve. So while Rex was on route to blow the Pentagon up to smithereens, he saw another advanced individual, this one named Adam Eve. Now she's one of the main characters in the comic and of course in the show, and he saw her as she was stopping a burglar. Now at first, his initial reaction was to attack her, right? Because that's his job. He sent to throw objects at people and then they Rex blow. So he grabbed a rock instinctively, but then Adam Eve was like, hey now, that's really no way to treat a lady, especially a lady this cute. So he's like, all right, Let's talk. So Rex connected the dots and he's like, okay, so you must be a superhero. So the guy I'm working for must be a super villain or a bad guy, right? So maybe you can help me out here. They're interrupted when that super villain gets back on his feet and resumes the fight. So Rex is told to get out of Dodge, but he insists on sticking around, having awesome seats to the show and all. So when Kill Cannon takes aim at Adam Eve, 
Rex tosses a pebble at him, threatening that he'll throw the rest of the brick next. So Kill Cannon fixes his aim on Rex, and then Rex catches Kill Cannon's shot. So after that, that pretty much did the trick. He fired that blast back with his own Rex explosions, and then he was toast. He didn't make it after that. He threw up on himself too. It was kind of violent. And then they get back to their conversation, and Rex needs Adam Eve's help because he's now realizing that he works for the bad guys, and maybe the birthday mopeds are just distractions after all. Who knew? Number five moving day. So the next day, Rex figured, okay, it's time for some change. I gotta get out of here. But first, he heads to the Pentagon, and instead of leaving casualties, he instead leaves a note. A note for Cecil Stedman. Now, after he gets back home, he begins to pack up for the next chapter in his life. But of course, Radcliffe returns, and he's a little displeased at the change of heart. He yells at Rex for abandoning his mission. He slaps him across the face, insults him numerous times, grabs his neck, continuing the insults while he lectures him. So Rex naturally wanted this to stop, you know, because nobody wants that to happen to them ever. So he naturally pushed Radcliffe's face away, but Radcliffe happened to be wearing glasses, so he accidentally charged those up while he was doing so. Remember, inorganic material goes Rexplode. So Radcliffe touches the glasses, and in turn, well, he doesn't, he doesn't have a head anymore. His head is gone. It doesn't exist. He didn't make it. So no more Radcliffe, which is fine. He wasn't the nicest guy. In fact, Rex decides at that point, you know what? No more facility. He destroys the entire place, and with nowhere else to go, he heads back to Eve's place, explains the situation, and the two finally partner up with a costume upgrade of course for Rex and they take down the salvaging team that was after Rex afterwards what a duo number four Teen team. The teen team is led by Robot, and they're going against the Mahler twins at first, and they of course came out on top. They're a pretty kick-ass team. Now the new friends split up for the next few missions, so Rex Sloan and Duplicate were teamed up for one mission, while Eve and team leader Robot went on another with this new guy named Invincible. I don't know, he's kind of important in the show. So the missions were going well on the teen team, and the robot announced that he was trying out for the Guardians of the Globe, a bigger, larger scale team. But he couldn't work both at the same time, so he broke the news that the teen team would be disbanded. How sad. Now this is when the relationship started to change because Rex certainly didn't help. He actually cheated on Eve with Duplicate and it wasn't Kate, it was multiple copies of Duplicate. So it's all bad. So he's flirting with her now in front of Eve. It's not looking good. So eventually the two fly out and have this big talk. And then Rex actually admits that he feels bad. He's saying that it doesn't have to be this way. He's being genuine, but his life gets even more crazy when he was asked to join the Guardians of the Globe. Number three, the Guardians of the Globe. On his first mission as a new member of the Guardians, Rex had to stop an invasion from the flag and after Eve is hit with one of their weapons, Rex comes to the rescue and catches her. I said rescue and I didn't even mean to, and I'm gonna keep it. Invincible takes out their wristband and prevents them from aging, and after that, Rex just finishes them all off with explosive BBs. Now in the show, this is a pretty wild turning point because Rex and other guardians attack Titan while he was taking over Machine Head's corporation. And then Battle Beast entered the fight and almost took out everybody. He actually severely injured Black Samson and Bulletproof, but Rex was fine. He got out of there, you know, kind of okay. He did a bunch of missions after and they all went well for the most part. And then once Rex got back to base and asked Monster Girl where Kate was, upon closer inspection, Kate was now having an affair with the immortal, how the turntables. So he got some advice from Robot because, you know, of course, the best advice ever. And during this conversation, Robot comforts Rex with that hand on his shoulder. How sweet, what a moment. Number two. The clone. Now, when Robot put his hand on Rex, Rex jumped in pain. He asked Robot what just happened. That felt kind of weird randomly. And then Robot tells Rex, hey man, I'm a robot. I probably hit a nerve. You know, I'm sorry. Not the softest hands. It happens a lot, I'm sure. Turns out Robot had plans of his own to grow and he needed Rex's DNA for a new body, for a clone. So Robot wanted to be a real boy. So after the Mahler twins set their cloning equipment up, they began putting his mind into the Rex body. Now, after the procedure was complete, Robot tells them, psych, you're not getting paid. You're actually going right back to prison. Hey, look at that. Who knew? So he tells the team and Rex is of course in shock and Robot tells Monster Girl that she's the reason that he decided to get himself a new body, a new Rex body because Rex was pleasing to her eye and Robot doesn't love Monster Girl or anything like that. But when Monster Girl hears this, she asks Rex if he wants to hang sometime. So it's like, oh, you think I'm cute because you think I think he's cute? Oh, you want to hang out sometime? It's cool. But then Robot whispers under his breath that phase two of his plan is well underway. So that's pretty mysterious, I'd say. Number one, another upgrade. So during the sequence attack on our planet, Shrinking Ray and Kate weren't allowed to help out because their bodies were at risk of being used as a host, which is a fair call. So the remaining team members took the battle to space to the Lizard League, and at first they had it under control. They took out the Salamander first, and then Iguana, but that pesky Komodo dragon ended up taking out our very own Shrinking Ray and Duplicate and her clone. 
clones. It was a bad day. So Rex had to bring out the big guns. Something had to happen. This was not okay. So Rex ended up losing his hand while he was putting an explosive in Komodo Dragon's head. So he thought he saved the day until King Lizard pulls out of nowhere, pulls a blaster out, and shoots Rex in the head. It was insane. Now King Lizard fell unconscious and Rex was then able to heal from his wounds, barely made it out alive. But he got a robotic hand in place of the one that he sacrificed. So at the end of the day, it was another cool upgrade. And then after that, he started to take his job and his role on the team much more seriously. Guys, there you have it. Those are just a few details of Rex Sloan, but there's so much more that happens in the comics. So if you want to hear a part two, let us know in the comments down below and your wishes will be granted. In fact, let us know any future lists that you want to hear from us. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Thank you for watching us on Top 10 Nerd and we'll see you next time. Bye. The series was written by Robert Kirkman and published by Image Comics. Image. Poof. On fire. Oh, God. Help. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 91 today. I turned 91 today, guys. Page 11 and 12. Ooh, what's going to happen next? You won't believe number four. Insert link. Uh, it's me wearing a noodle sweater. Sounds like there's no way to say that. Number four. Team, team. Mm -mm -mm -mm.